Hi everyone, uh, this is Alex from F2P.com and uh, I'm introducing you today to a video analysis of Star Wars The Old Republic um, in particular the cartel market. Um, for those who don't know, the cartel market is essentially um, an in-game store uh, within Star Wars that you can access and it enables you to purchase um, various items using um, real-world cash. Um, We'll kind of go into it uh, in detail in different areas throughout the video, um, so I'll not jump too far ahead. Um, starting with how you access it, um, straight away, um, BioWare and EA have kind of made it pretty obvious where it is, and you've got a big yellow button up there. Um, Cartel Market, simple click, and you can instantly access it. So obviously they're kind of trying to make sure that people aren't uh, missing um, the shop and struggling to find it. Obviously Star Wars The Old Republic has gone free to play and it wasn't with the original release. I think after about three months they decided to change from subscription to FTP. Um, however they do obviously still have subscription models which we'll also get into more detail um, as we go through the video. The shop itself basically it, it enables you to buy the majority of um, aesthetic items, kind of um, cosmetics, um, as well as unlocking features to play in the game. Now what this means is the, the F2P model that um, Bioware and EA have gone with uh, now is for those who are subscribers they have access um, to everything within the game. Those who are playing it free to play they can basically um, do their normal questing from the full levels of level 1 to 50 um, but there's a lot of the features that they don't have access to um, such as the war zones or the flashpoints which are basically the Star Wars instance and dungeons. So there's kind of little things like that um, and the number of characters you can make, the um, choice of species when in character creation all these kind of things have now been locked off for the free to play players um, but they are accessible within the cartel market so it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing on the one hand um, they're obviously trying to encourage people by preference to become subscribers monthly subscribers and they have kind of various subscription plans like uh, most MMOs do um, but what this also means is if you are uh, an F2P player and you would like to try out um, the war zones, for example, uh, which is basically the battlegrounds uh, PvP, then you can you can actually buy it within the cartel market. Um, we'll kind of go to the, the different unlocks uh, to show actually what you can get hold of. And um, so without having to kind of pay uh, a monthly subscription, you can unlock one of the features that you might be more keen to try. You know, if you're more if you're not much of a PvPer but you'd like to kind of focus on the PvE aspect, which you know you already get with the questing and the um, the in-game world missions anyway, um, but you want to do the instances, the, the flashpoints, then you could just unlock that and you know if you're not too bothered about the war zones then you can kind of leave that. So there's, there's kind of good things and bad things about it. I mean obviously it comes to the point where if you are buying and unlocking a lot of different um, features you may as well, you know, pay a monthly subscription. Um, but that's kind of by the by. So how the cartel market works is you buy cartel coins uh, with real world cash. Um, on average, you're kind of looking at around about one cartel coin per cent. So 100 um, cartel coins for a dollar. Um, it's kind of got a slight fluctuation because for 4.99 you get 450, so it's just under. But for 9.99 you get 1,050 cartel coins, so it's just slightly over. And obviously, the more um, you buy, the more you save, and is what Bioware are trying to get at. Um, so that's kind of how you access it. As you can see, um, I have uh, no um, uh, no coins at all. Um, I am on the the free-to-play model at the moment. Um, but if you clicked add coins um, and you wanted to actually buy something within the store 
um, then as it says a browser window will open you to swtor.com um, so they make it really easy um, and then you just kind of log in with your normal login details add in your credit card or other payment um, uh, payment plan whatever you've got whatever card um, and then it adds it into your ledger now it's adds to your account so it's not to a character particularly so you could kind of um, buy stuff for one character and then switch over to another character in fact to the point though I've not um, actually tested it because I, I don't want to pay my own money just to test it um, I do believe that it actually um, when you purchase it in the shop it is an account shop so you can log on to your other character um, and actually claim the item as you see I've got unclaimed items zero so that means I've got nothing in my shop at the moment so when you have an item um, it would appear there and you have the option to actually return return the item back into the shop and reclaim your coins the moment you actually click um, the item it will appear in your inventory and from that point it's uh, you know, a point of no return it's with that character now it does put it as an item within your uh, inventory even things such as the account unlocks and unlocking new characters and stuff and the reason why will become apparent later on which we shall also discuss so anyway you kind of get an idea of how the system works um, with the subscription plans um, I believe you actually get um, a few um, cartel coins per month as part of your subscription they arrive at the beginning thereabouts of the new month when well when you've when your new month has been charged and uh, you'll receive the uh, the cartel points uh, within the shop so obviously again they're trying to kind of push people towards um, towards the, the subscription model which is fine you know this like I said there's plenty of, plenty of different plans that you can go on um, but anyway let's kind of look um, into some more detail um, as to to what we've got so opens you up straight away into the featured so this is kind of going to highlight the new items um, that have uh, that have been recently added um, well not necessarily new ones because they've obviously got newly added there but obviously these are the ones that they're kind of trying to push I think it's probably the ones that are the most decorative and it has kind of an array of um, different things from these different sections um, but you'll you'll kind of see them duplicated um, throughout. So we'll we'll just go through um, the different uh, and, uh, the different groups, and you'll kind of see these items anyway. So you're newly added, obviously the ones that have recently been added. That's kind of self-explanatory. Um, these come in different formats. So you've got the newcomer bundle, and as I said, when you click it, it'll give you a little snapshot to the right and you can hover over it here so this is the item that you would actually receive in your inventory and the newcomer bundle you know like kind of um, chests and things that you can receive um, in the game you right click it open it and then all these um, individual items will appear um, in your inventory um, so it's not bad you know you've got the, the newcomer bundle I mean that is 405 um, coins at the moment and um, they've got a uh, 50% half price discount at the moment um, so essentially that would cost you about five dollars um, to get those you know you'd have a little bit of change left over um, and you know you get little things such as quick travel pass um, you get speeders minor XP boosts um, and then a legacy perk improved speeder piloting which presumably is to do with you know actually being able to um, uh, ride your speeder. Now again these are kind of some of the features that are accessible um, to the subscription people. They are things that were originally available to everybody but aren't available in the F2P model. Um, so you know that's why it's called the Newcomer Bundle. It, to try and get around without being able to um, ride a vehicle it, it's quite a grueling process. Um, from one person who's experienced it, you'll have to believe me on that. Um, but so th those are for your newcomers, that's what they think as a new player you could really do with. Uh, and then you've got like the extra stuff, so you've got Space Pirates Cartel Pack, 
and again the same kind of thing you know you've got little boosts you've got companion gifts and um, you've got rare crafting materials uh, we'll kind of highlight this a little bit more in the packs because again these will appear within these these are just the new items that have been added into these other groups um, so we'll kind of uh, we'll we'll have a look in the actual groups themselves because otherwise we're just going to be uh, duplicating a lot of things so first of all we'll go with the packs again these are the bundles these are the ones where you get the item and you get um, different items within it um, as you can see from this one this item came contains 24 space pirates cartel packs which is another item in itself and um, the space pirates cartel pack gives you um, five items, one boost, one companion gift, one rare crafting material and two rare items and so you've got different kind of themed packs that are available um, blockade runners cartel pack, black market and depending on the price it generally depends on how rare and valuable the items in them will be which is kind of one of big issues that seem to be on the forum in regards to these packs it is random the items that you receive so essentially it's a lottery you know you could buy the the space pirates cartel pack and the two rare items that it says at the end there that you get they might not be that rare it is absolutely random what you're going to get so people seem to have a bit of a problem that some people are getting an item that you know a lot of people are kind of seeing whereas somebody might get an item that is worth millions of credits, like a, a Revan mask or something like that. Um, from my point of view, if you're going to play the lotto and it's completely random, then you can't really complain. You know, there's no point in buying it with the presumption that you're going to get an absolutely rare item that's going to make you, you know, a rich person in game. That's not how it works. You know, the idea is that you have to kind of buy a few of them, perhaps. You know, it's absolute chance. Um, but yeah, so you've got the different themed um, items. They all kind of follow around the same type of um, uh, boosts, companion gifts, rare items. Um, so kind of the the thing with these um, that you'll notice is that there's it's not really pay to win the market. Um, it is very much kind of aesthetics and cosmetics and kind of you know it's minor XP boosts. There's no epic items that um, are going to imbalance anything. A lot of the gear that you actually get um, within Star Wars of Republic anyway is completely moddable. So you can kind of take your um, epic um, attachment or implant or whatever it is that you've crafted or looted or whatever um, you can take them out of one item and put them into another anyway. And essentially that is what most of the items here actually do. Um, they're kind of blank slotted um, gear um, for you to wear. So that's kind of uh, a look at the packs. Um, the cosmetic stuff, again you've got some kind of interesting things. So you've got uh, a nice uh, kind of pod racer type speeder. Um, and there, see even before you buy it, it tells you what you need. Now thankfully with this pack, you get the, the, uh, the skill up anyway. Now if you've already got it on one of your characters, then you know you may want to give this item to another character. Um, one of the good things about uh, the market is that they actually preview most of the stuff, so I can check what my uh, my guy looks like um, driving this thing. So uh, zoom out a little bit. So you know he's not looking too bad. Pretty fly. And the same is to be uh, said with the clothing as well, which um, which you'll also see. Um, then you've got kind of weird little things like a, a carbonite chamber. Um, I I'm presuming this is an item that you can kind of just drop, or maybe it's something that appears on your ship, I don't know. Um, and you regenerate health. Um, so kind of little quirky things. Um, there you go, you've got a, a pet that you can pick up. Whether it acts as a companion, I'm not sure. Um, or it might just be like the kind of droids and things that you could summon. Um, there you go, you can summon it from the pets tab of your abilities page. And then kind of little things, Ronker, Hollow Replicant. Now you, you can see like the things that have 
the least amount of in-game value other than kind of quirkiness. You know, they're, they're pretty cheap. Um, you know, that is kind of essentially you know just short of two dollars. So that's it's kind of nothing if you want to buy these little things. And that seems to be the way that um, that uh, Bioware and EA have gone with it. They they want people to either access the main features of the game, the unlocks, or for those that are subscribed, then you can, you know, there's something for everybody. Um, again, we've got more uh, more speeders. So there's quite a few speeders um, within uh, within the shop. Now your unlocks are your main features. Um, See, you've got kind of things such as an additional character slot. You are limited to, I believe, two characters. It's either two or three characters um, as on the free-to-play. Um, and I think it's three species um, that you can use as well. So within um, the Kata market, you can buy extra server character slots. Um, I'm not sure how this kind of handles for um, the subscribed um, players, whether there are actually limits on that. Um, I imagine you can kind of buy more character slots if you've used them all up. Um, but again, you know, you're kind of looking at 600 um, credits just for that one item. Now, you know, if you're kind of wanting to get an extra three characters, you know, you're kind of looking at the best part of 2000. Uh, cartel coins near enough um, so you're kind of almost spending $20 anyway just to get the extra character slots so uh, th there is options for the free to play players to kind of have a little you know bit extra here and there if you don't want to invest in a subscription model and that's fine um, but again if you're going to be buying a lot of stuff in here on the F2P then you might as well subscribe um, so then we've got kind of extra stuff here. So you've got your preferred access bundle, and it shows you the uh, the kind of extra little things you've got. You know, you unlock inventory modules, you unlock crew skill slots, and um, all kind of little things that are available to subscribe players um, or preferred access. Um, if you're to be a preferred access player, I think you have to have spent um, a certain amount of money. Um, on the game, um, either by buying cartel coins or being subscribed. I originally um, was playing this game when it first came out um, as a subscribed member. Um, I've recently stopped playing, st uh, cancelled my subscription, and when coming on to test this, my account is now registered as being um, a preferred um, preferred access. So, um, how that works? If you've been subscribed, presumably that you know, if you then do go F2P then you have um, some of the preferred accessed features and it's just kind of little things like you get sprint um, whereas if you're playing the F2P you don't get the sprint skill so you have to kind of walk really slowly everywhere just kind of little um, annoying things that when you don't have them you kind of really notice them um, again extra things um, grant your character access to equipping artifact equipment for use in your adventures so you know the artifact equipment is kind of like the the cooler gear um, that kind of isn't available to F2P. So th the game is absolutely playable um, for anybody that doesn't want to spend a penny on it. Um, the shop simply is a way to access the extra things that you might like. Um, here um, grants access to Section X, which is an adventure area for a level 50. Um, crew member appearance, so we'll have a quick flick instead of uh, going into too much detail with them all because obviously the shop's just going to change all the time. There's going to be some things that are always here for new players, um, but there'll always be new stuff added. Um, so here, you know, unlock an additional quick bar, um, you know, it's handy in PvP and PvE, guild bank access, cargo hold access, 10 galactic trade network sales slots. Um, I believe um, on the F2P you can't actually trade on the Galactic Trade Network, which is essentially this game's version of an auction house. Um, so that gives you 10 slots. I, uh, if you're a subscribing um, player, then you get 50 slots automatically. Um, additional cargo base, that's for your, I believe, your bank. 
Um, so unlock inventory modules, improved speed of piloting so that you can get better speeders. Um, what else have we got? So there you go, see Legacy Unlock Chiss. Um, now the Legacy Unlock means that you can play that character, uh, those species with any um, class which wasn't originally the case with the game different species were locked to different classes um, so you can kind of buy that from here so that's probably something that is available to all players something that they will want to um, buy it might not be available and um, just because you're subscribed you might still have to unlock that so again you know the, the subscribe members they get their free allotment of um, cartel coins each month you know they need something to spend them on and again, different legacy unlocks. It looks like for uh, for pretty much every every available species. And then you've kind of got some final things: customization, control, display, character titles. You know, the kind of quirky little cosmetic things, like we said. Um, equipment. Now, this I I do like. Um, I think this is probably where most paying players are probably going to spend the majority of the money um, especially the role player type people um, always handy if you're in a guild where you all want to wear the same uniform or if you all want to app here has been sand people and you know it's good to be able to access something like this so that every um, member of your guild can essentially look the same and with each item you've got your different items here and you can hover over it and it tells you um, what is moddable on it and you can click preview so that's me wearing um, the chest and you can click each item individually so if I want to see what I look like with the hand wraps that's great and um, obviously with the headgear so the good thing about it is um, that you will buy this item and these are all still individual items that will appear so they will appear um, in your inventory which is a key thing as I will mention in a moment um, so you've got different themes again you've got some um, Jedi stuff you've got Imperial stuff all stuff um, like themed um, uh, equipment and uniforms that are seen throughout the game on NPCs, some of them slightly unique, um, which is great. You've also got starship upgrades. You know, it's not just uh, gear and equipment um, for your character; it's gear and equipment um, for your ship as well. Um, and again, as I said, there's no there's no mods um, within these. You know, no modules for uh, your your boost or anything. So it is just aesthetics. It is just you're buying it for the, the look of the uniform but anyway um, with these slightly different these are buying um, your um, laser cannons and um, you know it upgrades you know this as they say this is an offensive bundle so this is pretty much missiles cannons and a blast condenser and then you've got tactical upgrades um, there you go and it requires to be level 50 and requires you to have a ship again with I'm not sure whether you can uh, do the, the space missions with F2P that's something that you probably have to unlock so realistically these are pointless for anybody that doesn't have access to the their ship um, so yeah so we've got some more um, um, more uniforms and then here we've got some uh, some gems now obviously it doesn't show it here but if I was a Jedi then you'd see that my blades were um, uh, lighting up orange um, I kind of have to take a you know a back step and say that actually this does look like it is a mod uh, I didn't think they did have any mods that uh, they were selling in here um, whether it's high enough to be considered pay to um, pay to win I doubt it I mean it looks like it's great but requires level 35 requires level 35 so you're not getting your top end gear you know you're not getting your level 50 rare items that you can just buy you know it's enough to um, 
kind of give you a little boost when you hit 35. You know, if you've not got a great uh, crystal yet for your either your your blaster or your um, lightsaber. Um, so again, so it's not too bad. Um, and you've got some extra individual items as opposed to uniform packs. And then you've got a, a Gamorrean axe, which you know, it's, it's nice, it's quirky. And I think, I presume that's going to have some uh, mods in it. So, you know, it's got stats on it and stuff. So that's pretty much how your equipment looks. Then you've also got consumables. So these are your kind of not necessarily one-off. Um, it'll either tell you if it's a single use, like the fleet pass. Um, uh, this requests immediate transportation to the fleet. Um, either the Republic fleet, if you're a Republic player, or the Imperial fleet, if you're Imperial. Um, this is something that you had access to um, um, previously um, uh, with the subscription model. But they made it so that now you have to kind of pay for it. But you know, again, it's it's cheap. Some of the consumable items, they are cheap because you know they're, they're going to be gone. You get a use out of them. You get quirky little things, uh, such as a jawagram. So right click to open this jawagram and dispatch a courier. The courier will appear nearby with his message and then remain for a short time. So there you go. And a loved one as well. So you know the kind of quirky little things that if you happen to have lots of money and you bought stuff and you bought everything you need then you've still got things to buy. Um, minor XP boosts again it's, it's nothing major it's going to help you out a little bit but it's not going to make or break the game. Uh, major experience boosts so you've got um, you know a single use for 120 um, coins or you can get five 360 coins, so a little bit of a saving there for um, those that want it. Um, medical probes, again, when you die in combat, you can use a medical probe um, when you're subscribed, um, whereas otherwise you kind of need to um, to buy them. Now this is what we're looking at: the weekly pass, space missions. Um, so you you don't actually unlock it. Um, permanently. So if you want to try out the war zones, then you you get to try out for a week, uh, and it tells you there at the bottom. Subscribers have full access to war zones, so it's a kind of little, hey, you know, you liked it, so why don't you subscribe? You get access to it all the time. So you've got the space missions, you've got the war zones, you've got operations, um, and then finally you've kind of got some extra more little boosts, including quick travel pass for getting around um, and that's in general um, what you've got with um, the cartel market as I said it's really easy to use um, you know you can kind of swap them between characters and um, if you've got the money that you want to spend then that's great you know you can buy some extra coins and buy what you want if you've not got the money that you want to spend, if you've not got, you know, if you're, a, a, you know, a student or you know you're kind of a younger player or for whatever reason you don't want to spend your hard-earned money on the game, you can't actually, you can't earn cartel coins through playing. Um, it's it is they are I, um, coins. It's a currency that is only bought by real-world currency. However, that said. As I mentioned at the beginning, every item will appear in your inventory as an item. And all the items that you can actually buy in the cartel market can be traded or sold on the galactic market. Hence me being here for those who had noticed it. So if you go on and you click, you know, do a search for a particular item, so access is always uh, a good one, you can actually go for cartel market, market items um, as one of the categories. So you can refine the search and there was something here before but there's not now. Let's have a look for the uh, we'll have a look for the Jower um, items. And there you go. So somebody's bought these with their cash and put them onto the Galactic Trade uh, network for you to buy 
um, with your in-game credits. So essentially how this is kind of playing out is that you can buy an item with money and then sell it for credits. It's a kind of roundabout way of buying in-game currency for the player. Which isn't a bad thing. I, it's the kind of one of the more redeeming features of um, the the market, the, the cartel market, that I like that the items aren't locked to you. You know, when you buy them, you can trade them, you can sell them to other people. Um, especially, you know, if you are the type of player that is running a guild of Tuscan raiders um, and you have more money than cents and you want to buy your entire guild um, Tuscan raiding gear, you know, you've got that option. You can buy the items and you can give them to them here. Um, but again, that is kind of one of the things that is causing a problem that some of the items that you get, the rare random items, are worth a lot of money, some more than others. So people are selling um, kind of some of the items for like millions of credits. Um, you know, some people are kind of hoping to use the cartel market as a get rich quick scheme. Um, and when it's not happening for them, you know, that's when people are kind of feeling a little bit burned by it. Um, but, you know, like I said, you can you can search for anything. So you've got the cartel market, you've got the different subcategories. So you've got the consumables, you've got the actual packs that you can loop for. Um, you know, whether you can actually use it, whether it's a companion item. The same kind of search functions um, that the, the trade network has for normal items anyway. Um, so that's kind of pretty much the, the full roundup um, of the market as far as most in-game markets go um, and shops. This is far from the worst that I've seen and um, there's a few kind of up and coming shops that um, I think are probably going to redefine how um, F2P and in-game shops actually work. Um, but for what it's worth, I'd say EA and Bioware have actually done a half decent job with this one. Um, it's not so closed up that it's inaccessible. It's not so bad that you have to pay for everything. Um, and it's it's good that it isn't, again, it's not pay to win. Many F2P games seem to make that mistake where the gear that you can buy really imbalances the game. And it is the people that have got money that have the, the top gear. So. Um, a little uh, pat on the back to EA and Bioware there um, for uh, for the market. Um, so that's pretty much everything we've got to say on it. Um, if you've got any questions, then you can kind of leave them in the comments section of the video. Um, but other than that, uh, stay tuned for uh, my next um, video analysis of some other random in-game feature. Cheers, guys. See you later.